Welcome to the latest version of the 10x method. Let's get started. So there's five chapters in this 10x series of course and in the first we do an elaborate introduction to what 10x is, why it's so effective and potent, how it compares to other traditional exercise methods and uh, its benefits in general. The second chapter we discuss the basic exercise physiology principles that underlie all exercise programming. So this will allow us to better understand and appreciate not just um, 10x specifically, but just exercise in general. We then discuss the five strategies that make 10x what it is and why it makes it so safe, efficient, and um, scalable. Then we actually talk about the building blocks, nuts and bolts of 10x in the 10x methodology. And then we finish off with the actual five step 10x starting guide. So let's get started. So in the 10x introduction chapter, we talk about what 10x is. We'll talk about its advantages, we talk about resistance exercise and its um, impact on our health, our fitness and our longevity. We talk about the common resistance exercise challenges that people face and why so few people do them. And then we talk about the 10x values, which is basically a response to these resistance exercise problems and then giving us the 10x solution. So what is 10x? Well, as you can read here, and I highly suggest you take the time to read these definitions very clearly because I believe that the definitions throughout this entire presentation will really capture the essence of what I'm trying to explain here. But as you can see, it's a hyper-efficient muscle and strength development program designed to help you build and maintain a stronger, fitter and better looking body in only 30 minutes a week. And I know um, that sounds crazy, but you'll see exactly how that's possible. So two components here. It's a resistance exercise program whose outcomes are to help you build strength, muscle, stimulate bone growth, help you lose fat faster and support your metabolic health. Now, apart from building stronger, fitter, and better looking bodies in only 30 minutes a week, which is a big claim to begin with, the true advantage of 10x, I believe, is the fact that it will become the future's ultimate exercise solution for our longevity. Now, we all already know that exercise improves our health, it can extend our life, but what few people understand is the fact that resistance exercise, 10x or otherwise, is the single most potent behavior that we can engage in to improve our longevity. Now remember, if longevity is, our, is the function of health span, how healthy and fit we are, our quality of life, and lifespan, how long we live as a result of how healthy and fit we are in large part, nothing comes close to resistance exercise in helping us achieve that. Now, the problem is that most resistance exercise protocols are very time, time consuming. They require, uh, they have high learning curves, it don't take longer to learn. It's practiced mostly in competitive environments like bodybuilding, weightlifting, uh, powerlifting. And so there's no solution, resistance exercise solution, that really scales well to the average person of different um, fitness backgrounds or different fitness levels, different ages, and things like that. And so the true advantage of 10x is that we believe we've built the safest, most efficient, and scalable all-in-one resistance exercise solution for maximizing our health span and lifespan. So in order to understand how resistance exercise actually impacts our longevity, it's useful to have a general understanding of the body's five functions. So the body has five functions, four survival and one reproductive function. The first function has to do with the structural organization of the body. What are, what's the body made up of? The main tissues like muscle, bone, fat, connective tissue, um, and things like that. And it determines the composition, the organ structural organization, the geometry, the shape of our bodies. Then we have metabolism, which is really has to do with energy transference and uh, maintaining our catabolic and anabolic states, which is basically the breakdown of energy to rebuild the body from scratch. And this balance is absolutely critical to everything we do, to every other function of the body. Our responsiveness has to do with our ability to respond to, recover from, and adapt to stress, infection, injury, things like that. Movement has to do with our movement capacity, our ability to move. And you can think of um, movement or our fitness can be developed or classified in three main categories, our strength, endurance, and our flexibility. And last but not least, our reproductive function, which deals with um, our rate of growth and our fertility through our life. Let's quickly take a look at why resistance exercise, not just 10x, but why resistance exercise in general is so important for our longevity. Now remember, longevity is the function of our health span, how healthy and fit we are, and our lifespan how long we will live as a result more or less of how healthy and fit we are and how healthy and fit we have been in the past. Let me show you how resistance exercise helps champion both of those. Okay, so starting with health span. Think of health span as your fitness, right? But 
another way to think of your fitness is our improving our movement abilities because we we can move in three distinct ways that develops the bodies in very specific ways those are strength endurance and flexibility right so remember movement is is the fourth function of the five functions of the body the only that way that we can develop the body is to stimulate an adaptive response but the only way that we can stimulate an adaptive response is through movement so we move we then um, induce an acute response to the to the movement and that acute response always precedes a structural and metabolic adaptation okay so keep that in mind but Think of our fitness as your ability to move well in three distinct ways. Ability to produce force, strength, the ability to become fatigue resistant in all movements, and our ability to have um, adequate range of motion. Why do we need more range of motion? Well, the wider, the, the, ra- the, the wider our range of motion, the more range we have for producing force. Okay. Now, out of these three, strength is absolutely foundational to our movement ability. And because resistance exercise is the only activity that directly stimulates strength and muscle mass, and because that's a foundation, it, if you could only choose between strength, flexibility, or endurance, you're going to choose exercise because it's absolutely fundamental to what we do. Now, there are three ways to improve your lifespan. That is how long you live. First is your health span, or your fitness, which we just talked about. Second is not dying, just avoiding life-threatening accidents and not... Uh, um, extracting a life-threatening disease, especially one of the four horsemen, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, cancer, and dementia, which ends up taking everybody's lives. So resistance training, again, makes you more injury-resistant so that you're more prepared for accidents or you, can, you have a faster rate of recovery from accidents because you have more protective tissue called muscle. And again, not a lot of people know this, but the third highest cause of accidental death in the elderly of people aged above 65, particularly in the United States, is uh, you know, preventable falls as a result of lack of strength or muscle mass. And then um, avoiding disease is strength training by enhancing muscle mass and increasing insulin sensitivity is the most potent way to prevent people from becoming um, uh, uh, metabolically dysfunctional, um, becoming insulin resistant, which is the precursor for type 2 diabetes. And once you have type 2 diabetes, that basically is a force multiplier uh, for increasing the rate of getting cardiovascular disease, cancer, and dementia. More specifically, resistance exercise and resistance exercise alone has the potential to help prevent and in some cases, even reverse some of the following age-related conditions. Now, notice that these five conditions are the five primary biomarkers that resistance exercise makes a direct, a direct impact on. And as you can see, the colors, they correlate with three of the body's five fun- functions. So they stimulate and restore the health of three of the body's functions. Strength, which is movement, muscle, fat, and bone, the structures of the body, and the glycemic response is our metabolic response. Okay, so we lose about 10% of muscle every decade as a result of 3 to 5% loss in muscle every decade, right? So we lose 3 kg of muscle every 10 years or 30% over our entire lifetime. Resistance training helps us completely mitigate that. Flexibility stretching doesn't, endurance training doesn't. Okay, we gain about 1 kg of fat per year um, even though we consume the same amount of food. So here's, the, here's the, the, the harsh reality, is that not only do we pick up more fat, but we actually replace our muscle with fat. So your body weight and shape may not change at all, and yet your fat, uh, uh, is, uh, your muscle is being completely replaced by fat. Um, and we, this is quite common now, and we actually pick this up in a DEXA scan uh, to actually see this um, very scary sight. Um, but again, when you have more muscle, you, you increase your metabolic rate, and so you can completely mitigate the age-related fat gain that we see um, in so many people. Next, we have bone. Um, resistance training stimulates uh, 
3% bone growth each year, which exactly correlates with the amount that we also lose per decade, which is the same as muscle. So we lose 3 to 5% of our bone mass every decade, which correlates to about 75 milligrams of bone mineral content. And again, resistance training can help us completely prevent that. Last but not least, the more muscle we have and the less excess fat we carry on our bodies, the greater our metabolic health because the uh, muscle and fat status directly, directly impacts our um, glucose uh, sensitivity. Also, resistance training is the only type of exercise that makes us more um, insulin sensitive um, workout by workout. Now, our health span or our level of fitness, it's not binary. We're not healthy or not healthy, fit or not fit. Rather, it exists on a continuum. Now, on this continuum, if you can imagine health, meaning an unconditioned but also an undeclined state, is, would be represented with this line right down here in the middle. If we start to develop and condition the body, that we traditionally think of as fitness, we move our baseline health towards the right. So either one standard deviation is what I call plus one or fit, or two standard deviations what I call plus two or fitter. Likewise, if we fail to develop the body or due to age-related decline, we start our baseline level of health, this line here moves towards the left. Uh, one standard deviation is what I define as deficient, and two standard deviations is what I define as patho pathological. Now, deficient means that there's a decline in your um, healthy baseline, but you're still fully functional. However, pathology is the point at which you are completely dysfunctional when you have a disease. Now, your strength, your muscle, your fat, and your bone, and your uh, metabolic health can all be mapped onto this uh, um, continuum or this um, health distribution, meaning you can have a healthy level of strength, you can have a healthy level of muscle, you can have a healthy level of fat, a healthy level of bone, you can have a healthy level of uh, metabolic health or glycemic response. Likewise, you can have a deficient level of strength, a deficient level of muscle, a deficient level of fat, bone, and so forth, right? Now remember what this continuum is showing us is that a decline from a healthy state to a deficient and pathological state to some degree is inevitable. However, we can slow down the rate of the decline by moving uh, ourselves to as far to the right as we possibly can. So again, remember I said the fitter we are, the longer we can live. Well, this is how we do that. If we become fit or fitter, then the rate of decline towards a deficient or pathological state is um, um, significantly slowed down. Let's quickly take a look at how the health continuum applies to the five biomarkers that we just discussed. Okay, so the pink values here represent female ranges and the blue represent male ranges. Now the goal at minimum is to stay healthy, but ideally we want to move towards a fit state, one standard deviation above a healthy mean. What does that mean? Remember, every time we move towards the right, that is what we call our fitness, or that is a, the health reserve we have as a hedge against moving towards a deficient and pathological state. And in this case, we want to avoid sarcopenia um, at all costs. Okay, So sarcopenia here would we be defined as having lean muscle mass below 64% in females and below 70% for males. Likewise, minimally, you want to maintain levels between 75 and 79% for a healthy male and 70 to 74% of, uh, for a healthy female. Again, how do we get these values? Best is to do a gold standard body composition test called the DEXA scan to get really accurate numbers on this. And again, ideally, we want to move towards a fit state. So males would aim for 80 to 84% of being uh, having lean muscle mass and for females 75 to 79%. Now resistance training has been shown to move individuals from a healthy to a fit state in as little as six months. And again, you don't even need to, this is not even 10x, right? 10x can do that in a, uh, um, can do the same thing, but in let's say 10% of the time, it's 10% of the, um, let's say, total time investment to get there. Next, we have fat mass. So same thing here. To be healthy, we need body fat percentage for females, 20 to 25%. Males should be aiming for 15 to 20%. And again, ideally, we want to move towards a fit state, right? So a fit 
state for fat mass for fat mass or body fat percentage for males 10 to 15 percent and females 15 to 20 percent that's what you should be striving for next we move to bone density so at minimum we want to retain a bone mineral density of 1.2 grams per centimeter squared which is the um, a healthy range for our total bone mineral density and again we are trying to move towards the right now stimulating bone growth is a lot harder than muscle and stimulating muscle or losing fat but it has been shown that again resistance training is the only type of exercise stretching and endurance training will do nothing for your bone density so again for bone health resistance training strength training is the only exercise that's going to help you move towards the right or at minimum um, uh, delay the rates of decline towards a osteoporotic state for our metabolic health we measure glucose transport primarily and again we use a score of 1.5 this is going to be the same for males and females what is the score the HOMA is the homeostatic model assessment for insulin resistance which basically takes your fasting glucose and your fasting insulin and through a mathematical equation it can more or less predict how sensitive or how resistant you are uh, to um, glucose uptake in muscle and liver cells right and so you want a score of at least 1.5 the lower the better in this case so you want to move towards a fit state i'm currently at 1.1 so that's something that uh, we want to aim for again as we move as we become more and more insulin resistant we move towards a deficient and eventually a pathological state that we call diabetes so now let's put all of this together by looking at the health span lifespan or longevity graph so on the vertical axis here we have our health span a level of fitness which we just looked at for all five of the different biomarkers and on the horizontal axis we have our age now again the basic premise is this if you can imagine this black line is someone in a who starts out with a normal healthy baseline state who starts to see a decline between the age of 40 and 50 and can expect a lifespan of just above 80 years on average However, if we improve this person's health, in other words, if we move them from a healthy baseline zero to a fit state of one, you can essentially um, bend the aging curve by 10 to 15 years, all things being equal, particularly if you do it for your strength, your muscle, fat, bone, and your metabolic health, um, allowing you to not only live um, you know five to ten years longer but it also gives you higher quality life as a result of preserving uh, your health span and then allowing us to also compress morbidity again most people don't know this but what this uh, compressed morbidity um, lines indicate is that for the better part of a decade we spend in a morbid uh, and a very functionally declined state before we die and so not only do we live want to live longer but we want to live we want to preserve the quality of life as we live longer, but also then compress the morbidity that seems to be inevitable before we die um, as much as we possibly can. And so this is how resistance training, uh, more so than any other type of exercise, and I'm not saying you have to choose, but this is how resistance training can independently help us live um, higher quality and longer lives. Now, by now you see how important resistance exercise actually is. But as I mentioned before, not all resistance exercise protocols are created equal. In fact, not only will some not extend your life, but it might actually shorten it. So these are some of the problems that most resistance exercise protocols and programs and that the way that they're um, implemented suffer from and um, how 10x is attempting to solve these problems. Okay, so first of all, the biggest problem is that resistance training shouldn't be treated like it's optional. In my estimation, it should be, it should be mandatory. It is essential for our health for the reasons that we already discussed. So everyone needs it, but just so few people are actually doing it. That's just the first problem. But why, why has this become such a big problem? Okay, the first problem is that women have over the years associated women lifting weights 
doing resistance training with the fear of becoming bulky. Well, I don't blame it, right? You go and look at a bodybuilding magazine and you see women on top holding away and she's like so you know, buff as hell. And so I don't blame them for making that association. But what women need to understand is that it is virtually impossible for the average woman to become that big, that lean, and that strong. Ask any man who is trying to put on muscle and become stronger. It was hours in the gym trying to do it and just failing to do that, right? So there are certain prerequisites to be able to do that. So that's absolutely false. And yet it's just keeping so many women from this all important um, health enhancing practice. Okay, for men, it's, it's not as bad, but even for, let's say, more timid and less experienced men, they always feel like they're going to do resistance training or strength training. They have to fall in one of like three or four camps, right? And that is either they have to become a bodybuilder or they have to become a, you know, they have to start CrossFit or powerlifting or become, you know, expert weightlifters in order to really benefit from this. And that really has limited uh, people's, um, let's say, approach to resistance training and the rate at which people are actually apply it. So um, the third thing, the third biggest problem is that most of the resistance exercise protocols are always implemented within a competitive environment. Like if it's not, you know, CrossFit, it could be for a sport and um, whether it's weightlifting or whether it's the sport, weight, you know, resistance training is the sport itself or it's conditioning for a sport. It's always done in a competitive environment and it's never really thought of as a, uh, you know, a practice for uh, lifelong um, health and fitness. The fourth issue, obviously, is that most of the available resistance exercise protocols um, have really high learning curves because most of them, you know, include barbell training um, or um, kettlebell training. And, and while I love these types of modalities, they require, you know, expert guidance to do them properly. And so this is why we, that's why most of these programs, when done without the proper assistance, uh, become highly unsafe. And you see high injury, uh, rates of high injury in people who do practice these types of um, resistance exercise protocols, uh, because they don't do it with the proper guidance and they sort of rush into it. And again, um, there needs to be a better way. There needs to be a safe alternative. Also, um, these type of protocols, because not only they have such high learning curves, but also they are most of their programming is based on the assumption that everyone is an athlete and wants to do what is known as periodized training. Periodized training is having a very long-term approach in your training, and so the volume is usually very, very high, and intensity is very low in the beginning. And so the um, people who start these kinds of programs end, end up always you know, taking on too much too soon. Um, and again, that's just very, very time consuming. So again, not very practical. Last but not least, the market response to these problems have been um, a spectacular failure in the sense that they come up with easy, quick and safe solutions, but none of them really, really work. So what are we left with? So it was in response to my increasing sensitivity to the problems and challenges that all of these resistance exercise programs um, faced um, knowing how important resistance exercise is that it led me to identify what we now call the 10x values or the five necessary and sufficient conditions for creating a resistance exercise routine that would be sustainable for most people most of the time in most situations and they are here listed in hierarchical order as safety again um, if we're going to maximize our health span and lifespan, the program has to be fundamentally safe, meaning it has to have minimal injury risk. doesn't mean we never get injured. doesn't mean we never get hurt. That's going to happen, but we really want to minimize the risk wherever we can and obviously minimize joint wear and tear, which so many high volume programs um, are, you know, not, you know are, no, are no stranger to. The second was efficacy. You know, there's, um, there's no point in having a safe program, but that didn't work. So we wanted a program that actually um, worked, right? So if this program set out to you know, improve strength or muscle mass, whatever, that it actually reliably generated those results. Third, effectiveness, meaning that you know, it's not very complex, it's easy to implement, it's easy to learn. Um, and so that made it obviously very practical. So again, if we have something that's safe, we have something that works and it's practical, more people are going to do it. Fourth was one of the most important ones, especially in today's world, um, 
is efficiency, right? What we wanted to do was, because these traditional protocols were just so time consuming, right? I mean, you know, an hour, you know, per session, three sessions, three to five sessions per week, um, it was really, really time consuming for people. That, that really is a, um, a big challenge. And so what we wanted to do is create, um, identify what were the actual mechanisms or the triggers of muscle growth and strength development so that we could have a way of um, exploiting them directly in the most um, efficient way possible. So get the results we want, but in the shortest possible time, getting rid of, rid of all the extraneous activities um, that surround so many exercise programs. Last but not least, we obviously wanted to, uh, to have it scale, right, that people of all ages could do it, different fitness backgrounds, different um, exercise environments, whether it was at home, whether it was at the gym, um, applied both to male and females, and of course, uh, you know, most people share the same, you know, um, longevity goals. And so we, wanna, we wanted to create a program, and I think we finally did create a program um, that satisfies all of these conditions. So what do you get when you engineer a resistance exercise program that is safe, that works, that's efficient, that's practical, and can scale to most people in most situations? Well, then you get what I call the 10x solution which is a workout that can stimulate the largest possible adaptive response in strength, muscle growth, bone growth, endurance capacity, and um, metabolic health in a single and in the shortest possible workout. So how does 10X compare to the traditional resistance exercise program? Well, first of all, to be fair, they do produce the same results in terms of strength, muscle, bone, fat, and metabolic health outcomes. However, 10X can do this in 10 to 20 percent of the time without undermining your lifespan or your longevity whereas the traditional training program privileges performance over longevity is very time consuming takes a long time to learn therefore it's less safe without expert guidance and also 10x unlike most resistance exercise protocols can actually stimulate an endurance adaptive response